All right, it is 536. This is the Board of Directors meeting and workshop agenda for the Redwood Coast Transit Authority. It is Monday, January 27th. So we'll call the meeting to order and call the roll. Cool. Commissioner Fallman? Here. Director Gitlin? Here. Chairman Berkowitz? Here. All right, can we all stand for the President of the League? And I'll go ahead and lead it. Salute. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. All right. So do we have any public comment from members of the audience? Hearing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Director Fallman? Yes. Director Gitman? Yes. Gitman? Chairman Berkowitz? Yes. All right, let's move on to item five. SA adopt resolution 2019 2009 authorizing. Federal Transit Administration Section 5311 and 5311F funds for operations and authorizing the general manager to execute agreements. Just for a record, it's 5A. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that before. I'm sorry. 5A. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's part of consent? Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay. All right. I'm reading this a little. Okay, uh -huh. I see now. So four was consent, five and five A. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've already approved those. So let's go over the minutes of December 16th. Motion to approve the minutes. We and second. Motion to approve and motion and a second. Any public comment? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Director Gitlin? Yes. Director Fallman? Yes. Chairman Berkowitz? Yes. Okay, we have approved the uh, item six, the minutes. Public hearing, public hearing to, this is item seven, public hearing to adopt resolution 2019-2010, updating RCTA's Americans with Disabilities Act. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening. Um, this item is related to the launch of our CTSA, Consolidated Transportation Service Agency programs, where we're starting to do ADA eligibility determination and transit travel training. Um, it probably should have been updated quite a while ago, so it's been 14 years since it was uh, adopted in 2006, and the ADA plan just basically governs how RCTA approaches ADA compliance in all aspects, but it does include, and being as I come upon this uh, in the process of setting up the CTSA stuff, uh, put it on the agenda so we could get it updated to make sure it doesn't conflict with what we're doing. So on your copy, you should have a track changes version that just shows what changes were made from the 2006 original um, adoption. Um, mostly it's just house cleaning stuff. Um, this is now, now named the uh, t January 2020 update. Um, there's some old graphics in here. When I get time, I'll go ahead and replace them with like our current service maps. We have two more routes than we used to have back in 2006. So they, uh, several references were to insert those in there. Our route structure changed a bit. Uh, we have a, our fleet has changed a little bit. We, we're implementing an all low floor fleet. So on the bottom of page five, I noted that. Uh, changed up our, over time, our routes and our regional services change, so that's noted on page six uh, and seven. Our fare structure was updated with some text on page seven as well. Uh, talks about our um, distance-based fare structure that started in 2018, 2017-18. Um, basically then uh, updated our hours and days of service, um, our fares for our dial -a ride both general public and ADA eligible on the bottom of page 10. 
and uh, let's see we only reserve up we only accept reservations up to seven days in advance now it was 14 back in the old days so that was updated on page 13. Um, let's see we updated our stats for dial a ride you can see that um, as an agency things have changed in that in those days we were mostly a dial a ride agency there was 24,000 trips on that um, nowadays, it's uh, closer to 5,000. So the dollar ride usages went down, um, which has allowed us to provide more fixed route service over time. So that's that was updated on page 13, 14 um, is where um, we describe how we are becoming the CTSA. Back in that point in time, the Del Norte Association for Developmental Services was taken on the CTSA role in 2006. So we updated that and talked about how we will do our ADA eligibility determination program, which is the first bullet. Second bullet is the transit travel training bullet. And uh, so those are updated accordingly on page 14. Uh, 15, there's nothing much. 16, just some clerical. Talking about our computerized uh, dial ride scheduling software, which we didn't have back in those days. Um, that's about it. The back of it, there's not much updated. All right. Do we have any, any questions? questions or anything in particular you guys want to discuss? Well, yes. Um, can you give me an idea of how the free rides for seniors and students are doing? The free rides is for veterans and students. I'm sorry. Seniors aren't free. They're still half fair, though. Right. Um, it's doing pretty good. Um, of course, I don't have numbers in front of me. Um, we were just talking about that today. Um, it's grown pretty rapidly. Do you have any numbers on your computer that you can pull up? It, it's been doing well. And anecdotally, even the students, because last time we met, we were here in mid-December, and we, we, we did an outreach event at the school, um, got a group of kids to talk about what they'd heard about the service why they weren't using it or they were and this and that and the other and since then it seems like anecdotally from talking with staff today the ridership's up a little bit so the words getting around um, but it's still one day it'll be very busy the next day not so much so I don't know we still don't know what's driving the what's underpinning that but uh, it's picking up a little bit and uh, the college is still doing real well that's you know we've been doing that at, at College of the Redwoods for a couple three years so um, in general, the ridership is up, and that's driving a lot of our ridership increases that you see in the annual report a little later on today. Okay. What's the cause of action here? What do we need to do, um, Chairman? Is there a motion here or anything? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it a file? This is just a public hearing. Yeah, so we need to open and close the public hearing. There's no one here to comment, and then we need to uh, adopt the 2020 sure. update. Yep. Okay. okay, so I'm opening up the public hearing. Okay. on this uh, resolution to adopt uh, the 2019-2010 updating RCTA's Americans with Disabilities Act. And do we have any public comment? Hearing no public comment, uh, do we have any questions or comments from board members? Yeah, I just, Joe, I just have a <clears throat> Quick question about the training for your drivers mm -hmm. in helping um, those with disab disabilities on and off the uh, off the uh, the coach. Mm -hmm. um, what what's involved with training? Uh, um, is there cost involved, of course, uh, or is it uh, just part of the overall driver training? Um, I'm going to let Chuck speak to that more because he's the, the operations manager. Um, but what I can say, it's part of their overall training, and, and it is required. The interpretation of the ADA is that the operators have to provide assistance as needed and requested for folks that might need help getting on and off the coach, and it's uh, integrated into tr First Transit's overall training. And Chuck can tell us a little more about it. Yeah, we specifically have tied in with some training from Easter Seals that we use with new drivers. And we discuss things as such as how to be respectful, how to uh, um, protect themselves as well as meet the needs of the driver or the rider. I mean, so for instance, if someone needs a little bit extra stability, um, we don't wrap our arms around them and adjust, and we'll you know hold our arm out, and they can grab hold of our arm, or they can grab hold of our hand, and we can help them up that way. Uh, being that we're not medical transit. 
there are some things we have to stay away from uh, for protection of our drivers. Um, but we, uh, yeah, we've got some, some good training any, uh, on that. Any costs um, that you can identify specific to this particular training, uh, or is it just part of the overall training exercise once uh, you do this? I mean, is there, I can't think, I'm trying to think of the consequences of the, not only the word consequences, the fallout of, of, of someone when you stop the, the vehicle as mm -hmm. it takes you off schedule, um, yeah. is, is there any cost <laughs> associated on, on fixed route, especially if we're, if we have a, a <clears throat> wheelchair, that's almost guaranteed five minute slowdown minimum. Okay. And do you normally have more than one or two, or is it a r relatively rare occurrence to have someone in a wheelchair coming on, or on, is it getting more common? That's what I guess what I'm getting. First at. part of the month and the 15th of the month, it's pretty common that we'll have two and three on a route. Um, it's. Sometimes have been more. It's pretty rare that we have more than three, but it's it's not uncommon for the first part of the month, the middle of the month, when people are have gotten their uh, their checks and they're getting to their um, you know doing their grocery shopping or getting to their doctors. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to have three on a on a route. And there's enough space on any all of your equipment to accommodate three, four, however, I'm just trying but to anticipate three, what three. If if there's any more, the ADA rules are if, if we are full that we have uh, up to a half hour to get another vehicle out there to get them transported. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a curious subject for me. I don't know if this is, uh, we're all living longer and some, with that comes um, the tools necessary for us mm -hmm. to exist, some of which yeah. are wheelchairs or. Yeah, whatever. and we do quite extensive training and retraining when it comes to the, you know, the four point tie downs and the, the wheelchairs on the buses and okay. so that they Great. stay safe there. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's an opportunity to also just touch on um, some of the technology projects that we've talked about. Um, we do, we've talked a lot about in the last two years, and we've implemented some of them. Some are actually aimed at um, automating some of the stuff that's in the ADA plan, like calling out stops, which helps people that are with low vision orient themselves as to where they're at in town so they know yeah. when to pull the cord and get, and get off. We, we still have to do that verbally because our, our basic little AVL that we just implemented this year doesn't do that for us. Mm -hmm. um, same with uh, an audible thing when the door opens, um, there's systems very similar that'll um, actually hit, hit a wave file and it'll tell the person waiting when the door opens what route it is. That way if they're not sighted, they don't get on the wrong bus by accident if it's a stop that more than one route serves. We don't have that yet, but we've come a long ways. Mm -hmm. um, and one last thing is it does mention if you get to like um, page 27 towards the back of the plan, it talks about how our regional routes deviate upon request. Now, this would also have a very negative impact when, when they call for a request, they, they'll go up to three quarter mile off the main road. Um, but yeah, it has a real negative effect on the schedule, but it's our way of providing the ADA compliance out in the, in the rural areas away from town. So we basically have two systems away from the Crescent City urbanized area. We do these three quarter mile deviations of the main bus. So it has to be scheduled in advance. Um, but in town, we have our own separate fleet, the dial ride fleet that okay. uh, Joe, scurries around. Joe, I have a question for town. you. Uh, you have reference here to acceptance of the uh, financial audit, but I don't see that on the um, Schedule here. Where where is that? It's a good question. Uh, well, I'm oh oh, I sent that along. It was a separate PDF in your packets because the password protection was not allowing me to mold it into the same packet. So there was uh -huh. three PDFs, and two of them were the audit, and one was the packet. So I, I do apologize for that. So it was, where are we discussing that here on the agenda? Uh, that was in the consent calendar. So on the consent you guys approved calendar. five A and B. Okay. The the audit was in there. Yeah. Well, let me go back to that. Okay. I really didn't realize that. I apologize. Um, and I'm concerned about the um, 5311 and 5311 F funding. You have not received that for 2019 or 2020. Correct. If we don't receive it pretty soon, we could be operating in the red, which we can't do. We can discuss that for a minute. Be glad to. Thank you, Bob. Um, so, Historically, 
the uh, funding was delayed about nine or 10 months. So we would budget for it. Um, we would file our applications, let's say in the previous summer, and then the funds would come in in the spring of the following year, just in time to, to kind of balance the budget year before June 30th. Um, somehow Caltrans is having trouble getting their agreements processed just in this last year. So we, so, so what happens after the end is to get the money to come in, we submit a request for reimbursement, an RFR in the spring, and usually the checks get cut pretty fast within a month or so after that. So for example, Dan Heron, who does the grants for us, my partner, he usually submits the RFRs about now. He's working on this year's. Uh, as we speak, and then the money usually comes in like April. Um, this year, we can't submit that RFR because they never even issued a contract, a, you know, a, basically a year ago. So I don't know what's going on within Caltrans. It's not just us. It's not some punitive thing they're doing to us. There's something, something wrong at the state level, and they haven't sent them out yet. So we don't have the agreements for last year, so we can't submit our reimbursement. We have our packet for reimbursements ready to go, just waiting for a contract. So who do we, uh, what person do we have to rattle the chain in order to get this through? Because we could be in a world of hurt if we don't get this money from 2019, let alone 2020. Right. Uh, Kathy Pongratz is the, uh, the person that's running things, and I shook her you know I, I rattled her chain a couple weeks ago and she said they're working on it it's soon but then we you know we haven't got them. yeah and that's caltrans headquarters down in sacramento their division of mass transit and rail or whatever it's called now so yeah kathy's the one handling this within there and she she knows that we're waiting on this so um we can we can keep rattling the chain at the staff level or and or I can threaten that our board wants to. So, that would be good. Yeah, I'm thinking, do we need to send a letter with uh, uh, wet signatures uh, to her? To That'd be good. To chain from all the board members? Well, that would be good. I'm curious, that, that, that's not a bad idea. But you're not going to be back till March 23rd. Uh, how do we develop a, a nice to firm letter right. to expedite payment of past due? Uh, uh -huh. In February, yeah. yeah. February? Well, or there's no yeah. meeting until March. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So are you prepared to make a letter, get it up to us, and then we just have to have it up? Now that you have to come over to the board so we can all sign mm -hmm. it? Well, yeah, just uh, basically put it up to, on Ka Kylie's desk and we'll yeah. sign it up there. If you guys are up for that, I think we could do that off meeting because we have a quorum now giving me direction to do that. Okay. So yeah. I think we could do that. I think consensus should be fine for that, but. I would think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, considering we don't have. I mean, more. unless it would be more powerful to have that reflected in the minutes that there was an unanimous motion and not just direction to staff, but I mean, it might not be. We're overdue. We should have gotten it. Uh, we should have got last year's by like May of, of 2019. So that's eight months overdue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I'll make that motion so it's part of the official record that uh, we're requesting uh, ex exp expediting a payment due from May of 2019 in the amount of, and I don't know what that number is, Joe. Uh, there's two of them. So it's it's together 322000 That's the, the, the accounts receivable in line and in the audit. Our continuing operation as an entity is, is Threatened. seriously compromised. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, for it's sure. It's not a nasty, but it's been brought to the attention of this governing board. Okay. That, that would be okay. the tone, uh, which we, did, we hoped it wouldn't come to this, but I think uh, I'll make that motion and ask for a Yeah, second. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, do we have any public comment? We have no public comment. Any comments by board members, mm -hmm. commission members? All right. Call the vote. Director Vallman? Yes. Director Gitman? Yes. Chairman Berkowitz? Yes. 
Okay, okay. so Joe, you understand the tone we're taking? And yes. It's come to our attention kind of uh, that the uh, payment's not being received. I appreciate it. As long as we're on the same. It's not a threatening, uh, no. it's not an angry, it's just we need to operate. And then it's the hope that someone will walk it right through. Yeah. And uh, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think we can move on now. Okay. Uh, so we never closed our public hearing. Yeah. Let's finish up number seven. Thank you. 1920. Good. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and close the uh, public hearing. And now we can move on to presentation discussion FY 2018 19 annual. RCTA <coughs> annual report. Joe. Okay. Uh, yes. All right, I'm lost here. Okay, so we did, uh, did we take action to approve the 2020 ADA update plan? Move to adopt resolution 2019 20-10 updating RCTA's ADA with um, plan. Second. Well, wait a minute. I thought we did. I don't that. think we. Yeah, this this is. We've already done this. It was just a public hearing. Public hearing to it. Oh, I to see adopt what you're getting at. Yeah, we closed the public hearing now. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, we're on to eight. Yes. All right. There was no further action on eight and no. seven, was there? Well, no. there's a resolution attached uh, yeah, with it. Yeah, there's a resolution. Oh, I'm adopt. sorry. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, I think it might be missing out of the packet. No wait. No, it's. I'm looking at it. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah. So but you have a, a motion. To adopt. Okay. It's just a public hearing to adopt it, not adopting it. Am I correct? Oh, well, that's correct. Okay. So then that yeah. might be something in the consent agenda for the next for time. For the around. next time. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Um, All right. Rescind my motion. We're there. <coughs> and rescind the second. Okay. Now we're on number eight presentation and discussion. We just discussed that. Joe, mm -hmm. for the annual report. Okay, thank you. Sorry about all the confusion on this agenda That's okay. today. All right, so this item is um, for our annual report. So we, we went through most of this a month ago, um, oh, yeah. but what we didn't have was the audited financials yet at that point. So they're here now, they've been incorporated. There wasn't much of a change. Um, the I had put a placeholder figure based on my best guess facts as to our operating cost per hour and our overall operating cost last year. And it turned out to be like 30 cents higher per hour than at reality. So each of the charts that shows our operating cost per service hour has been updated to $73 and 46 cents. I think it was like 70. 370 or something before that's the hourly rate to operate yeah so that's our total annual operating cost divided by our total annual number of service hours revenue hours yeah uh let's see so any other highlights so i don't want to go through all this again because we just did this last month right. um i've added some projects that so we did some capital projects um Let's see what else I added in there. August 19th, so we uh, restructured our morning service to better serve the schools as part of our Students Ride Free program. So I added that in. It wasn't there from last month. Joe, uh, did we discuss advertising? Uh, I think we may have omitted that the last uh, meeting. Uh, that our advertising revenues and what they're doing, are they growing? Is it, uh, it? No, we didn't talk about that last meeting. Um, they're doing well. Yeah, so last so fiscal year 1819 that we were basically talking about here in the annual report and the audit, um, we realized 20,000 and change. Okay. Um, it's found money. Which was, yeah, that was really good. It was above our expectations. Um, looking ahead to 1920, I think we're going to do about the same. Um, we've got, um, two large advertisers that have indicated that when they do, um, when their current terms expire, they're looking to re-up with new creative. Um, one of them is us, so that works out good. But the other one is also the, um, the DHHS. Uh, and then we just got a new advertiser that's um, an ad agency that's supporting the census effort. So their, their signs are going up in the next couple weeks, and they'll be up for the spring. It's a short-term buy, but it's a, mm -hmm. they all add up. So, yeah, I think we're going to do 20000 or or so again this, this year we're in now. Okay. That's good. And, and that shows itself in the report. I can actually show you where that helps us because um, it counts as fares. So we get to add it to our fares. So if you look, let's see, I don't know what page, where you look at our system wide fare box recovery, it is, let's see, 
On page 15 of your annual report, system-wide performance. So if you look down towards the bottom right of the table, fare box revenue, 164,909. That includes the 20,000 of, um, of the ad revenue program. So pure fares that were dropped into the box and passes were bought were like 144 and some change. So, which only up about 5,000 over the year before, but the big jump then is due to that advertising revenue that counts as local fares that we generate. So mm -hmm. that helps our percentages significantly. <clears throat> Do we have routine um, advertisers, some big, maybe the hospital or something that goes every single year? Not yet. Um, well, sort of, yes. Yeah. So the Department of Health and Human Services uh, a year ago, well, it'll be a year by the time they finally got on. I think it was April or May. Um, but they did a year by and a large one last year, and they're planning on doing a new one with some new creative uh, in a couple months. So I, I just reached out to Amber the other day. So they're on, and they want to do it again. They're just going to shuffle their creative a little bit. And then we went ahead as part of our Students Ride Free grant, because the grant's pretty robust. In order to spend it down fast enough, we, we bought some sides ourselves okay. to promote that. So you see mostly on the street side of the bus. Yeah. So yeah, those two are pretty big actors that should be good for another year, okay. which, is, which is good. So that gives us stability. And then, but we still have some tails available and stuff for other advertisers that, as they approach us. Like we had Contour and now the Census now. So we... I'm going to reach out again to the to the casino because they were interested, but the spots they wanted at the time weren't available. So I'm going to see if they want us to move stuff around. We could maybe make something available for them. Okay. And did we see we had Center Coast Hospital? No, they've never advertised with us yet. You might want to approach them. Yeah, yeah. that'd be another. Group. Do you have a contact person? Uh, the just not off the top of my check head. Check out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, we haven't got anything with them yet. Go right to the top. That. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mitch Hanna. Yeah. I'd go right to the top. Mitch Hanna? Mitch Hanna. Mitch, yeah, Mitch Hanna is the CEO. H-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely reach out to him. <coughs> so, right. um, yeah, in general, um, it was a good year. So the audit was, the numbers were about where we thought they were, so it didn't change our charts much. Um, the Crescent City local routes had a very good year, uh, and the regional routes were pretty stable. So in, 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 in total, we were up about, 10% in ridership. Our costs went up about 4%, which is um, a mixture of the uh, minimum wage impacts on the operating force in the current contract bid of First Transit, and then a little bit more administrative because the board's given me direction to do a little more work on some of these projects, so that, that mixes in there. Um, and fuel, fuel was maybe a little higher than we'd hoped last year. How are we doing on retention of drivers? Chuck, that'd be a good one for you. Um, we're, we're doing quite well. We're, we are down one driver, uh, but we have three others in the pipeline now that we're going to be starting training. Two of them will be starting training this next week. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we've, we've got drivers that have been with us for quite a while okay. and are sticking with us. Good. Good. That's important. Can I ask just two brief follow-up questions for sure. training real quick? Um, how long is the training? Uh, our training, the training itself cause you, can usually be done in about three weeks. Okay. What usually holds us up longer than that is background checks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's kind of slow, but, but it's three, we have, we start out with classroom and then we do behind the wheel training and then that's followed up with cadetting and then when they finish that, they're ready to go into revenue. Okay. Uh, does cadetting take place in another area? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's no. what I was going to guess. Ask next is if they travel anywhere for the training. Yeah, they're traveling right on the routes with, uh, the, with routes. the seasoned driver with them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we try not to kick them out on their own too quick. Okay, thank you. You bet. All right. Do we have any more discussion on this item, item eight? Hearing none, let's go ahead and move to item nine adopt resolution 2019 2011 accepting Federal Transit uh, Administration Section 5310 funds for bus replacement and authorizing the general manager to execute the agreements. Joe. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this item, it's an, I'm excited to bring this one to you. Um, 
Last time we were here, we were just crowing about a, another grant, so I want to make clear this is different. Um, we had just heard word back in December that we were awarded a, a competitive grant under the 5339 program nationally, which was a real shock. We, we did not expect to get that money. Um, this is another good surprise. So this is 5310 funding, which is uh, another section of the F FTA, Federal Transit Administration's money. Um, this one is uh, directed towards uh, ADA paratransit and dollar ride type activities. So we applied for two vehicles that we use in those, in that program to provide dollar ride service. And we got awarded for two replacement buses. So that was good. So um, that's the good news. And there's really no bad news because uh, in addition, the local match on this grant was 20%, but Caltrans has the ability from time to time access things called toll credits. And I think it's credits credited to the state of California for all our toll bridges and toll roads. So they use that for the local match. So technically we don't even have to have a local match for this, which is really good. Fantastic. The bad news is their program caps the amount of money for the medium sized buses at like 80,000 each and they really cost 160. <laughs> So we're going to need local match for that as it is for the overage uh, for the medium buses because we use the low floor buses that are easier for seniors to get in and out of. They're faster to board wheelchairs. Um, as Chuck was saying, that's a major issue on fixed routes. So the, um, the good news is uh, it's 100% match. The bad news is it's a little bit underfunded, but we'll take it. So we're really excited to get this and we're asking for a resolution to accept the money. Questions? I'll make that motion for the resolution to accept the money in your own words, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any public comment? We have no public comment. Do we have any discussion among commissioners? Uh, hearing none, we have a motion and a second. Director Fallman? Yes. Director Gitlin? Yes. Chairman Berkowitz? Yes. All right. Move on to item 10, prioritization uh, discussion of RCTA capital funding, remaining PTMISEA account balance and potential reprogramming of PTMISEA funds from facility projects to bus replacement projects. Joe. Thank you. Uh, this one's a discussion only, so this should we should wrap up pretty shortly. I don't want to beat this too much, but we've talked about the PTMISEA came from Prop 1B about 2006, as, as old as our ADA plan, um, and the funds we were banking them over time. We've started to spend them down in the recent years because we've had no not enough. Uh, we've used them as local match generally for federal funding for re bus replacement. However, we set aside some of them initially for bus stops and some for facilities like our Williams Drive um, Maintenance and Operations Center. Just a year or so ago, seeing that the money's getting drawn down so fast for the bus replacements, we actually moved money from the bus stops into bus replacements and shored that up a little. So at that time, it left us with a balance um, coming into this year on the bus replacement side of the program at 491000 or so. Uh, and we still have the 159,000 set aside for uh, facility improvement projects for our Williams Drive building. Um, what I'm suggesting now that we think about is it's not an action item today, but um, with all these grants that we've just received, um, with the local match that we're going to need to commit to deliver those bus replacement projects, it's going to deplete most of that, most if not all of the 491,000. We'll be getting down, getting down low. So I'm going to suggest we think about moving some of the 150,000 or so from facilities into bus replacements because there's very little ability to continue replacing buses. Now we'll be good for a little while once we get this flurry of buses in, but it's not going to meet the needs for, for too long. Um, we do have another, uh, each year we're, we, for about three years now since SB1 passed, we get about 40,000 a year in state of good repair funds. The first three allocations we set aside for bus stops, and that's available now, but um, staff recommends that the board sh uh, shift gears on that, and we, we put the, the rest of it going forward into bus replacement. So that'll give us some steady 40000 or so a year for local match on buses, but that won't be enough, but it'll be, it'll be a start. 
um, that combined with moving some of the facilities money, maybe half or whatever the board thinks is prudent, maybe even more than half, um, into bus replacements will allow us to keep that fund um, adequate for maybe the next round of replacements in four or five years. And beyond that, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need some help. Um, we've talked a couple of times at this board about um, how we built our operations out so big over time that we don't, we, we use everything that we can on operations that we might need to cut some unproductive stuff just to free up some money to contribute towards our capital issue or to allow, you know, some other things we've talked about is some, some wages and stuff. So anyway, this is just a reminder about that. And, and if the board agrees, we can probably, when we meet again, we can actually take a formal action to move the PTMISCA money around. It's pretty easy. It's some forms we submit with Caltrans. Uh, we've done it twice since I've been here with you guys. So this would just be another another adjustment based on the fact that bus replacements really is our Are you top looking priority. at any electric buses for this? No. We have to move in that direction pretty soon, right? We have to move in that direction pretty soon, but we're hoping some funding comes out to help with that. So, so no, we're, we're, we're underwater, you know, looking in the future without even going to electric. That doesn't include that, no. I'll, we'll continue. We had an item last month where I was directed to keep gathering information and stay on top of it. Just don't do anything yet. So um, that was, I was prepared to continue doing that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so this is a discussion item. Any yeah. other discussion on this topic? Um, for the Williams Drive shop, is there a shovel-ready project for that entire facility improvement, or is, um, maybe what a conceptual plan for the parking lot? E conceptual plan would probably be putting too much glory on what we're doing, mm -hmm. but um, we are, um, each year we have to, add gravel and shore things up because of the t deterioration from the rain and stuff. This year we added much more gravel than usual because Chuck's moving, uh, initiated a process to move where the buses are parked so that we have better visibility of them. Uh, and I believe th those expenditures already happen. So um, they've been passed through. So the 159 has been spent down a little, you know, probably like, mm -hmm. for how much was the rock, do you remember? Yeah, so it's probably closer to 155 because that'll come out of there. But beyond that, no, we have no shovel-ready project. Mm -hmm. We haven't done any uh, preliminary engineering or even got any um, real, I don't want to say we don't have any quotes for fixing the building. Um, Nick and Chuck have been working with door vendors. Um, one of the biggest needs is the, um, the extra-large bus bay doors have not held up over time very well with the wind and weather, and those need to be fixed to secure that area. Um, so they're getting quotes on that. So that can be a project. So one thing I suggested in the staff report is, as soon as, and this is where me being out of town and stuff, I, I rely on our ops guys here to kind of reach out to vendors and get quotes for these on the ground projects. So as soon as we have a good firm quote that we like, um, we can have that information in hand and come back to the board. It's like, okay, let's keep whatever, 30,000, so we can do this, this, and this to the building, then the rest we could maybe move over to, to replace bus replacements. Um, we don't have that just yet, but they're working on it. Okay. Okay. okay, I would like to see that facility improved somehow in a very substantial way. Um, obviously not tonight or in the next year or anything, but I mean, it's gonna take you at least two years to get the money together and then to get the plans drawn up. I'd like to at least have the plans drawn up because grants do come up and things become available. If we at least had that ready, I mean, that's what the city did with Front Street. We had the mm -hmm. plans drawn up and ready to go. And once the grant became available, we applied for the grant and got the grant and we can move forward with some construction on that. I want at least that process to happen. Good idea. Um, All right. Any other further questions, comments, or discussion on this item? All right. Let's go for operations reports. Is there any? Uh, is, was there any uh, motion needed on this? I nope. Don't think no. No. This is. was just just a, a is just a file report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Operations report. That's you. <laughs> Chuck will give us the operations report. Our staffing and our staffing, so we are down one driver right now. Uh, I'm also trying to get, that was 
caught me a little flat-footed. You asked about some numbers earlier, and I found them, and I'm trying to get my computer to come up now uh, so I can give those to you. But uh, um, the other piece of good news just that Sean and that uh, Nick, my tech, just let me know this afternoon is that we expect one of the new buses to be uh, in revenue by Thursday. Uh, that's with all the uh, video and, and everything on board uh, to get it ready to go. So that's good news. We'll be glad to get that out on the road. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure that you knew about is, which won't be any surprise to you, the weather has been affecting us. Uh, we talked last time about the big windstorm just before Thanksgiving that caused us to uh, shut down a couple of routes on the, the Route 20 going to Arcata. And then, of course, uh, last week, week before last, when the 199 was shut down uh, for most of the morning, uh, we didn't close the entire route, but we didn't go up the hill because that, that route goes across town over towards Walmart. So we just went to Walmart and sat there till the, till the uh, route caught up with that driver, and then they brought it back uh, through town. So we still ran the route. It just was incomplete because of the road closures uh, going up the 199. Uh, so that's that's always a fun challenge. Once again, I commend their drivers, their troopers. Uh, they they stick it out and they do a good job and they handle the road safely. Um, what specific numbers, uh, Mr. Berkowitz, were you looking for when you asked earlier? Uh, I lost it. Okay. Uh, well, I think he was looking for the student ridership. Okay. Yeah, well, in yeah, in January. And, uh, veterans. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Students and veterans. Yeah, for, for students in January, we have a total of 156, no, I'm sorry, that's veterans, I have a total of 156 boardings for the entire month. Um, so we have some days where there's none, have some days where there's 17, 15, 12, so on and so forth. Um, but for the month, it's been 156. For high school students, that is really, we've seen some real uptick there. We still have some days where we don't have any, but then, for instance, on a couple of days, the 7th and, uh, uh, and the 16th, we were up over 25 riders. Uh, and the total for the month, total boardings is 301 with, with high school students. Um, and veterans? And veteran, veterans, let me look that up again here. Uh, veterans was 156 total boardings. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. Any I, I got a question. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, Chuck, how's uh, driver morale these days? Oh, um, are we up to, to the level of full employment? And is everybody, I use the word happy, is everybody relatively satisfied with morale? They're relatively satisfied. We're, we're working with some different run cuts um, mm -hmm. to keep our overtime down. And we have one in particular that hasn't been a particularly popular cut, so we're trying to see what we can do. Fernando and I have been working on what we can do to adjust that one uh, to be more accommodating to the driver's desires. But I'm always interested through you, of course, to hear a uh, driver's input um, mm -hmm. as to what can make their job easier and um, how do we do outreach to them? Is there a suggestion box or something like that on site? Uh, I'm interested to know that everybody, if their words are being heard, mm -hmm. I think we heard from one driver a long time ago, he didn't feel like this board was responsive to him, and I'm not sure uh, if that's uh, anything that's serious or more than one, but I just want to make sure yeah. that the drivers know that we do listen to them. We're very appreciative of their efforts. It's mm -hmm. hard work, yeah. and sometimes um, we don't say thank you enough. Yeah. So I, I just yeah. wanted to see if there's anything yeah. we can do for outreach to uh, encourage driver input uh, both good and bad i guess if it's there's nothing to complain about that's all good news but i'm sure you hear things that uh, we'd like to know about um if there is okay. anything there that you feel like uh, there's some grumbling and you know just run it by us does okay. that sound like a yeah. possibility uh yeah i mean the main thing that i'm thinking of right now is like i said about the the one shift and the, and the issue with that shift is that we have a six hour gap between okay we're, yeah. you know trying to do things in the morning when we're busy in the evening when we're busy and so it's a split shift which is not uncommon in transportation <clears throat> but yeah i was a driver i know what it's you know it's kind of tough to get started and then be off and then have to get geared up again the same yeah. day 
uh, and come back in and do it. So we've been trying to uh, address that. Uh, I can't guarantee that we'll be able to fix it completely, but, but we, we are trying. We are going to pursue any uh, money issues about raising wages for some of the drivers we talked about. Uh, Joe, is that something we can address uh, maybe in your manager's report? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that then. Okay. And All right, I just want to, we want to do outreach. Uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're not deaf and blind to the, these guys. They're, they're, yeah. they're people and they, their input matters to us. Well, I, I, I tell you one thing that would mean a lot to them is catching them at a stop and saying, hey, thank you. Okay. Yeah. You know, that doesn't take very long to do. I can catch them down at the, the uh, uh, Crescent, you know, the cultural center, and sometimes there's three or four drivers at a time there. And you just walk by and say, I'm from the board, just want to tell you thank you for what you're doing. I, I, you know, I appreciate that. I'm going to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. All right. Joe, manager's report? Yes, yeah, so let's talk about the. Uh, so, one of the things that came up recently as we're launching our CTSA program we we took an item we got a proposal from First Transit for what it would what it would cost to add some additional duties to what they do to help it work um, that would be take the lead on the travel training with me in support and then take a supporting role on the ADA eligibility determinations with me, me taking the lead so uh, and that was approved we, we got those contracts started first of January the exciting thing, the, the, the preamble on that is because it, we are going to, we're waiting for the specifics, but we're working with First Transit. So rather than add a position, what they're going to do is spread that additional money among uh, a number of <coughs> our staff that didn't get any raises recently. Um, as you may know, and I think Mark and Chuck explained to us a few months ago that the, the operators got a pretty decent raise a few months ago, but that the dispatchers didn't and the support staff didn't. So um, what I've asked first to do is pencil it out and get take care of those folks that didn't get anything. Because we're asking them to do a little more. And to me, if I was in their shoes, I'd do a little more to, for a little more money. So that would be cool. So that's what we're seeing happen there with that money. So I think that was consistent with what I heard this board wanting to see happen. So we should have, hopefully by the time we get together again, we'll know exactly, they'll have a plan on who's getting what and hopefully it'll already be implemented. So I was just talking to Chuck about that today, okay. is how they're gonna spread out those new funds that they're getting for helping us uh, deliver those two programs for the CTSA. We stole my thunder on the AdRev program, it's doing good, so I won't beat on that again, that came up earlier. One thing I did wanna ask about is the Del Norte Trans Local Transportation Commission um, has reached out to us and other entities to see if we had any planning projects for the next fiscal year, so this would be for 2021. <coughs> and two or three came to mind, so I uh, began discussions with Tamara about that. And um, one of the ones that seems to have the most footing is, or the most traction, but I wanted to run by you guys just in principle, would be to look at uh, the, our current transit center, and I use the term loosely, but it, it's kind of a, it's a transit hub where our routes meet is at the Cultural Center on Front Street facing, facing east. Um, there's a couple shelters there, but beyond that, nothing that we own or control. Um, so there's no one there, there's no staffing there, there's no restrooms right there, there's some over in the park. But um, So when we did a lot market outreach before the short range plan, there was a lot, some negative comments about the cultural center and how we needed kind of a real transit center like an Arcata or something like that. So one of the things we've been thinking about is that and, and how we could um, upgrade the experience down there. Um, one idea that we floated, I don't know about to this board, but may, Roger's been with us for a while. We floated one idea about having like a mobile kiosk trailer that we yeah. could haul down there, and that yeah. way it wouldn't be a brick and mortar permanent structure. Because I think, you know, I, I'm not a planner anymore per se, but I think there's some coastal commission stuff. I mean, we're right there by the water, so that site might have some yeah. permitting issues and yeah. stuff. So perhaps a mobile kiosk might be a good thing for that location. So then we were, so that's one idea is to maybe flesh that out a little more. What would it cost? What would we need to do? Um, but beyond that, um, it might be prudent for us to look at, do kind of a high level look at other potential sites around the community that might be good transit hubs for the future. I mean, granted, it's sort of like w what Alex was saying with getting something shelf ready and, be, and planning ahead. Um, it might be um, wise to start looking around um, 
is see if there's any other places in the community that would make sense for us to uh, um, plan for, for possibly developing like a transfer center. It could even be a, well, the sky's the limit, I suppose, but a transfer center for sure, because that, that's what the cultural center provides us now is, is a stretch of curb where the routes can meet. Um, the Southwest Point comes in there from Brookings and from uh, Klamath Falls. Um, our regional services come in there. So it's sort of, it, it is our transit center. It's just very, very modest. So that pro planning project, I was thinking of submitting with Tamara, if our board likes the idea of looking into it. Sure. I think it could, I think the, pro the planning project could be delivered with the budget, the, the kind of budget uh, scale that she's got available. So it seems like a cool project to look at, but I wanted to see what you guys thought about that. I like that. Yeah. yeah I, um, think, yeah. I think so. I'd like to see explore come back, report mm -hmm. back. Yeah. I think that's the one thing that separates us from <clears throat> other transit authorities is this kind of hub or center that you can identify in the community. And I think that'll normalize transit more in the community to where you might get more riders just because this isn't some weird dial a ride thing, but it's an actual normal transit service. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. It could I be don't a think it's it that, can be a market, yeah. right? No, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying, and uh, the lack of information there, not having someone to buy tickets from or mm -hmm. ask questions, is a real deal. We heard that loud and clear a couple of years ago in the market research. Is <coughs> you know, uh, wouldn't it be great? So yeah, if that's if you guys agree, I think we'll submit that as a project. It'll probably go through the DNLTC TAC and maybe to the commission all before we meet again, but I just wanted to bounce it off you guys first. Sure. I think that's pretty much all I got. Uh, can I just follow up on a couple of things we had sure. talked about in mm -hmm. the past? Uh, did we did get any positive reaction or has anything changed with the state and national parks about that access road? I haven't heard from them at okay, all. Okay, so but you did outreach to them? Not lately, no. Okay, well, no. If, I thought, you know, it being winter time, and uh, we talked about this in the past, never went anywhere um, but getting that road certainly isn't improving itself by its own it's wearing down and i'm thinking we might be able to be helpful to them in transporting people up during the summer months into some kind of a route which they would have to budget and pay for i just thought that uh, it's worth knocking on that okay. door again yeah we never heard if they did their transportation study I, the last we heard from them they were yeah. trying to get a foundation to fund that i haven't heard anything okay under announcements. Um, oh, go ahead, oh, Alex. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick one about meeting times. There was a miscommunication on my part to the board and to staff. When I said after 5, I didn't mean as late as 5.30. And if there's issues with us getting into the building, then, I mean, I get off at 5. And if everybody's comfortable with me getting here at 5.05, .05, then 5 would be a very acceptable meeting time for me. Okay. Other than one glare from one council member for my regular meetings, five works for them at that board. So, okay, well, I yeah. think if, that sound okay if we you? go our next meeting March 23rd and we yeah. put it at 5 p.m. and you'll still be the chair at that point, uh, uh, Bob. So we'll just wait a few minutes until Alex mm -hmm. comes. Yeah. Or I mean, even if you get a quorum and I make mm -hmm. it in during the Pledge of Allegiance, I mean, that's... Yeah. I understand that that's what happens. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think we could schedule it for five, and and if you're not here until 5:05, .05, so be it. So mm -hmm. what? So yeah, I think you have consensus on okay. that, Joe. Good, thank and you. And just this is just that. a little note that I'm always looking for your number on your letterhead um, oh. to call you. Mm -hmm. Can you, as part of your normal communications when you're sending out email, include that 235 number? Sure. Just as a right. as a, and I, I guess I should have you on my contacts, but I don't. It's okay. uh, I, I'm always looking, well, let me get an email so I can call Joe back at 707-235, whatever that number is. Mm -hmm. So for all future communications, if you wouldn't mind putting your um, contact number there, um, make me happy. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, not to harp too much on that, but I right before this meeting was going to call you and realized I didn't have you saved in my contacts and okay. saw that your number was not in the line there. So okay. I, yeah. I agree with that. Thank you. No, thank you. That's a good idea. Any um, other announcements? No other announcements? Okay. We're going to be standing adjourned until the next board meeting, which is Monday, March 23rd, 2020, at 5 o'clock. Okay,